What's up, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday night edition of the Patriot Campers virtual show. I'm Justin Monticello, founder and CEO of Patriot Campers. And I'm Tommy Mills, national sales manager for Patriot Campers. And tonight we are going to run you through the new flagship for Patriot Campers, the winner of the 2020 Australian Off-Road Camper Trailer of the Year, the Patriot Campers X3. Now, we've got a couple of comments coming through on YouTube Live already. Uh, why are we doing the X3 again? Now, for the people that have been following us, we did do uh, the X3 in our first ever virtual show. We've changed the whole format of the show. And we feel like we didn't do the X3 the justice that it probably mm. needed. So we're going to bring it back uh, in tonight as the wind up to the X range of camper trailers. We've been through the whole model range yeah, now, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. I find like when I'm turning my head, my microphone, my earpiece is like pulling on my neck. I love how you got an earpiece. Yeah. It's good. Well, it's, it's so I can hear you when you get down to the showroom, mate. <laughs> so, uh, how are we going to run this through tonight? Um, as per usual, we've got, um, we can see we've got Ryan from Off Grid Outfitters, our New South Wales distributor on there to answer any of the questions um, as they come through. There's there's quite a time delay there, so we will get to the Q&A at the end of the program like we normally do. Tommy's gonna head down into the showroom after we get through the intro and he's gonna run you through the X-ray that you can see popping up there on screen now. Now, the X-ray that you see down there in the showroom tonight, um, that's one of the pre-production models. So that's one of the first uh, X-rays that we actually produce. Now, this one here, will be featuring uh, on Patriot Games, season four of Patriot Games. This earpiece is really annoying me, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I just need to fix my, my earpiece. We're live, we're live. We're live, okay. <laughs> just deal with it, mate. Um, <laughs> I just thought about Taylor Swift, yeah. Kanye West. Yeah. All right, <laughs> why the X-ray? Let's talk about the reason why the X-ray. Tom, can you answer that question? Look, I think I've, I've got a good idea, you know, the, the product range has sort of got to a point where we, we kind of were looking for something else to suit, you know, different clientele, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's kind of what it's done. This is going. Okay. It's Earpiece going. is going. Until you get down to the showroom, and then I'll sort it out during the next copy, break. Copy that. Okay. So, yes, the X3 um, has been designed to suit a different, to push us into a different market with Patriot Campers. Now, the funny thing is, and, and this is going to be really interesting to the people uh, who don't know, the X3 has been around for a very, very long period of time. So quick in the show, I can feel a heritage moment coming up. Back in 2013, when we started designing uh, the first Patriot X1, uh, we put it into production towards the end of 2013, early 2014. And the concept of the X3 was born in about July 2014. And we actually prototyped the first ever X3 um, in July 2014. I've actually got an image here. Um, you can see up on oh. your screen now. This image was taken uh, some months later. This was November 2014, um, when we actually got to fitting the canvas and doing the development on the X3. And you can see fundamentally from the back there, the design cues are all very similar, mm. but now six years down the track, we've taken everything that we've learned, all the technology, all the new materials, yeah. and introduced them into the product um, that you're gonna see tonight, that we're gonna run you through tonight. Um, looking back at it now, I'm glad we didn't do it in 2014. I don't think the business was ready, and, and really, uh, it was early 2015 where Patriot Campers really started to take off. Mm and we just didn't have the ability uh, to be able to put the effort into it that we actually wanted to. That was pretty cool, Sam. It was pretty cool, mate. <laughs> yeah. well, I've got a lot, lot more photos than that. Um, now, like getting back to it, like I was saying, my family has evolved with our, our camping style over the years, and I think I said it in uh, one of the earlier videos that we put out in the X3. Now it's gotten to the stage for us, the twins don't camp inside the camper with mum and dad anymore. You know, they're 16 mm. now, they don't want to be with us. No. And they haven't for a long period of time, you know, when yeah. we're out camping with the boys. <laughs> they're off doing their own thing. We only really needed to, uh, we only need to accommodate now myself, Sarah and Mia. And it's not gonna be that much longer before Mia will be doing her own thing in a, in a swag or whatever. So we wanted to introduce a model um, that had some real luxury when it comes to camping, some interior space, somewhere to get away from the weather uh, to run a heater. We've also now that we're an international company, uh, colder climates, a uh, lot like experienced overseas, not so much in Australia, obviously if, you, if you're down south. Um, we wanted people to be able to escape into those climates and I think the X3 ticks every single box of having the luxury not of the camper trailer, 
but still being a hardcore, pure blooded camper trailer. Yeah, I think it's, I found I think we've nailed it on the head, really. Yeah. So look, I mean, everything it offers, uh, you know, being able to get up inside, like you said, you know, that that inside escape is is perfect, and mm. you know, you can really see, uh, you know, yourself using it in, in all sorts of situations. So look, before we um, before we go into that a little bit further, what we might do, let's touch on the tech specs real quick. Um, so here's Tommy. I'll let you run through the tech specs on the X-ray. Okay, so. <clears throat> 3.75 meters long, uh, 1.85 meters wide. Okay, so sort of similar sort of dimensions to the X1. Um, you've got uh, it's a 1600 kilo GVM, um, and what else we got there? Uh, 120 kilos on the drawbar weight, but the big difference is there's a bit of uh, tear weight difference. So um, 1120 kilos. So it's um, still amazingly lightweight. I might just I might just add there the reason being, and, and we have had this com this uh, question a couple of times. How's it the same length as an X1? Well, if you take the, the spare wheel off the back of an X1, then the X1 is shorter. But if you take into consideration the spare wheel on the back of the X1, um, the X3 is almost identical in dimension. So for our US viewers, uh, 12 feet long, um, six feet wide. It is very, very, very compact camp trailer, which is what Patriot Campers is, is famous for. And, and still obviously good for taking wherever you want to go. You know, it doesn't get, have any hindrance. Exactly. Okay, price point? So $69,990 in Australia. And we're looking at $51,990 in the United States. Now, price point, let's, let's touch on price point when it comes to the X-Ray. There is really not an option list for the X-Ray, is there? I mean, we've, we've jammed pretty much everything you can Everything. You're talking airbag suspension, you're talking TVMS, you're talking Webasto diesel oh. hot water, you're talking uh, tent heating. Yeah, um, inverters. Inver 1500 watt inverter. Um, there, there is really not a lot that And now with the new awning, you're covering around the front as well. With, so the, with the hexacore, with the uh, PCOR awning, which we're going to get into a little bit later on, the X-Ray comes really fully optioned, and that's a big consideration if you're looking at, at buying a camp trailer, the things that you might need. Um, what we might do, before we get into this, and I know probably everybody's itching to see the X-Ray, and we'll get you down into the showroom shortly, Let's just have a recap on the judges' comments, what the judges thought of the Patriot, uh, Patriot X-Ray at this year's 2020 Australian Off-Road Camper Trailer of the Year. Everyone was looking forward to checking out the new Patriot X3. The attention to detail was astronomical. Tim, did you think the same? Fit and finish, always top quality for Patriot, but the thing that really jumps out straight away is it's a massive change for Patriot. This is the first camper from Patriot with proper internal lounge area. So it's clearly targeting a slightly different market, somebody who wants either wet weather coverage or a family who's looking for somewhere where they can just get inside and escape the heat. It's a fantastic change. This is Patriot's version of a hybrid. It's just a completely different take on the whole thing, which makes you go away and want to rethink, well, what is a hybrid? Beautifully done, elegantly engineered, but it's just a completely different camper. I think one of the things for me was when I stepped into it, I would be almost afraid to start camping in it because it's so slick. Yet they're, they're designed to take out and really knock them around. Justin takes these things anywhere and everywhere and beat the death out of them <laughs> to make sure they're going to work. The core asset of any Patriot, and they've been renowned for this for many years, is its off-road ability. Scott, were you impressed with its ability out in the bush tracks? The thing's almost bulletproof. When you look at it and Justin's background in, in sheet metal fabrication and, and using his key skills in, in the design of that, you could bounce that thing down any track and you'd be fine. And it's such a compact passage, got a nice low centre of gravity, and its four-wheel drive capability is only going to be limited by the vehicle that you tow it behind. Yeah, we're towing it around the four-wheel drive track the other day. I was driving it and we are towing it with Justin's Dodge Ram. He was more concerned about getting the Dodge Ram around the, the tight corners than the Patriot. Forget about the Patriot. You didn't even know it was there. What did you think, Scott, about that new fabric that we're using on the awning? Now, this is the real X factor about Patriot and the X3. It's a new space age type of canvas. So you're moving away from close weave into this hexacore that is just absolutely astounding because it's innovative things like that new canvas style that they've got that's gonna really make this thing stand out, not just tomorrow when it rolls off the, the factory floor, but 10 years time after you've owned it and used it. One of the things that did really stand out though from a self-sufficiency point of view is a 12 litre diesel tank for the Wabusto water and air heater. You know, that should last you months. And then you're only running gas through your Weber or through your stove. So twin 4.5 kilo bottles there are gonna last again for months. 
15 watt inverter, it's got two AGM batteries, it's got plenty of water capacity and it's got the ability to be able to lift water. What did you make of the comforts of the living space, Scott? The one thing that really shone for me for comfort was not only the interior detail of the upholstery, but if you're in bed and you wake up in the morning and you want to have a cup of coffee, everybody's got to see what Patriot's done here. At a push of a button, up comes the coffee machine from the bowels of the X3 and you can be sitting in bed making your cup of coffee. You don't have to get out of bed to enjoy sipping on a coffee whilst listening to the world wake up outside. And just beside it, you can reach down into, a, into, the, into the fridge. Internal access to a fridge is a must. Like if it's raining, you can be inside, you can access your fridge, you can access your internal storage underneath. There's a massive draw bar, slide bar there that you can actually access from inside on the seat. So everything is almost accessible from inside whilst you're enjoying that coffee. I like to talk too about that roof rack system they've got on top. So any commercially available roof racking system will bolt to this thing and you can put all sorts of things up on the roof. In terms of quality of finish, it's always been hard to question what Patriot do. They've always put forward something exceptional. One of the things they've done differently for the X3 is they've moved from a Rhino coating to a Raptor coating, which is more UV stable. Uh, it's also very hard wearing like Rhino coat is, which is a positive change. And use of hex bolts throughout. It just gives a clean line and it's a smooth finish to the outside quality of it, top effort. Okay, that's a, uh, a new family focused off-road camper from Patriot. It certainly seemed to hit the mark. Pretty cool, huh? Really good. Pretty cool really when, you good. Say it, when, you, when you see that sort of reaction uh, to something that you put your heart and soul into and all the people here at Patriot Campers, um, absolutely amazing. And to win Australian Camper Trail of the Year seven times in a row, uh, what a feat, yeah? What a, uh, another proud feat for the team here at Patriot Campers. Um, we've got Graham online now. So, Graham uh, from Camping Adventures in uh, Victoria. Mate, thanks for joining us. Well, I think without further ado, I'm you get to, down into the showroom. I'm heading down there. Yeah? Yeah. Get down in there and um, let's let's see this thing first hand. Yeah? Let's do it. We'll see you soon, Tom. No worries. Into the chassis. Yeah. 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 Okay, <laughs> the, sh the chassis, I can, I can see Tommy running down the camera, uh, following him down there. Uh, Tom, you down there? That was, that was quick, man. <laughs> I'm down here. I'm that here was quick. next to the X3. Okay, let's talk about the chassis on the X3. Now, the chassis on the, uh, the X3 is the same ridgy light uh, chassis design um, that we feature through all the X series of camper trailers. It's been tried and tested for the past six years. Uh, if you watch Patriot Games, you'll see um, how much I bait on these things personally. Now, there is uh, quite a few changes between the X3 and, uh, and the other X range of camper trailers to support that body and, and the overhang. We've done a lot of work with the engineering team. As usual, getting the center of gravity um, on this thing perfectly. It is riding on the Cruise Master X Cruise uh, suspension um, that's been developed ex extensively for us. But I'll hand over to Tommy and I'll get Tommy to, um, to give you the actual walk around because I know everyone's dying to say that trailer. Thanks, Justin. So yeah, look, I want to touch really, um, you know, watching that video really comes back to me. You know, there's nothing better than watching that suspension work under that ter tough terrain. It looks so good. And whenever you follow one of these, you know, you can really see it happening and, and see why um, they're so good off-road. But what I'm going to do is sort of, we're going to duck down a little bit uh, and we're going to sort of have a look at the back. Now, yes, based on the X1 chassis, you still have the, um, the recovery points at the back. Okay, here and here. Um, and you also have the rear tow hitch receiver. So if you want to take bikes with you, you can still do that. Um, and there's a big feature that's different under here is the, uh, is the capacity of water. So the water tank's slightly different and I'm going to take you to the front shortly and show you why. You've got um, a bash plate on the rear tank and then you've got another one that's housed in between the suspension there. Um, so it's nicely keeping that weight nice and low in between the chassis. Um, so you've got lots of protection there. Obviously you're getting protected by the suspension under there. Um, but it's so strong and so agile. Uh, and obviously you can see that here the suspension, this one's had a bit of work um, and where it's sort of situated there. But what I want to go through is obviously there's no rear uh, spare on one of these. So what we've done to, to sort of combat that is we've put the uh, spare under the chassis um, again 
getting your sort of weight distribution really, really well on these. So when they're towing, uh, they're weighted perfectly. So you get not a full size spare, um, not really a space saver either. It's just slightly smaller um, under the front chassis there. Um, and that's obviously going to help um, with any um, rocks or stones going in between that and getting to your water tanks. Uh, but that's going to sit there, really easy to, um, to wind down um, and yeah, get a spare. But you know, in our experience, unless you're Justin, you don't often, often see that. While, uh, you're, while you're under there, Tom, <coughs> I might just jump in there. Let's maybe have a quick talk about the construction of the chassis because we haven't really got into that since we did the X1 four weeks ago for people that might have missed it. The whole chassis is 100 by 50 by uh, 3 mil. Um, and it's hot dip galvanised. I did see a question just come through there about the galvanising process. Why do we hot dip galvanise and not zinc plate or just plate? With hot dip galvanising, hot dip galvanising is a method where that chassis, that, it, it's dipped in a, in a bath of molten zinc and it's heated to about 700 degrees. And fundamentally what that zinc does when it's, when it's dipped at that temperature, it forms part of the steel structure or the substrate. If you ever try and scratch uh, some hot dip galvanising, you'll notice you'll never ever scratch through to raw steel unless you went really, really deep. If you went with a standard zinc coating, which is zinc is electrically charged in a bath over the top of the material, effectively it's like paint and it just sits on top of the surface. You could scratch it with another steel surface or a bit of paint. And so effectively what that does is it gives you about five times the coating thickness with hot dip galvanising than any other method. Um, which means it's, it's five times more durable, but impregnated into the steel means that your chassis is gonna last a lot longer. You'll notice with painted chassis and painted drawbars on a lot of camper trailers and caravans, or even rhino coated or raptor coated, when they get hammered by rocks or sprayed by rocks, it doesn't last on the steel. It chips up and really every big trip that you do, you gotta be repainting your drawbar if you wanna keep your, your stuff looking uh, tip top. Whereas a galvanized chassis, uh, stone chips will never get past the galvanized coding was that enough information i love Tom? it I, I think you know justin i love doing these things because i learn something every day you know for me that's stuff that i just don't know so thank you and i'm sure everyone else is saying thank not, you not well. a problem but where, where what i was actually meant to say and i got sidetracked by the galvanizing that whole chassis the method of construction of that chassis uh it's our interlock chassis so we laser cut notch, uh, notches and tabs we lock them into each other fully weld the thing off um, then get it hot dip galvanised and as far as structural integrity goes, we give a five year uh, structural warranty on all of our products, uh, but your chassis with a little bit of care um, will last you a, an absolute lifetime. Perfect, yeah, and that's a really good description, Justin, of how these are made. Now, look, with all of our uh, drawbars, it's no exception for the X3, um, we have a DA35 hitch on there, um, so perfect from Cruise Master. It's the easiest hitch on the market to use and probably the safest um, as well. You've got uh, 10 inch electric drum brakes on one of these um, as well. Um, so here's your handbrake there. Uh, and then we also have a jockey wheel. Now a lot of people ask, why don't you do a swing away jockey wheel? Well, look, this is pretty much fail, fail safe. Um, you disconnect it and you put it on the drawbar. It's not gonna let go. Um, it's really easy to put in many different um, positions. So if you're heavily bogged, like we have been before up in the Cape, I think you remember, we're able to actually get that um, as low as we could to the jockey wheel to, to bring it up um, so we re could recover it. So there's plenty of reasons why we do things. Um, there's a lot of laser cutting as well um, that we do to the, um, to the chassis, the drawbar, and you can see it's sort of cut out there. So the hitch isn't sitting on top of like a box, actually it's cut into there. And with that, we're still keeping that structural integrity um, here and then be able to hide everything under there. So we're keeping everything nice and low profile. Um, so you can open your rear doors and tailgates without hitting on other things there. Um, Tom, I might just jump in there, mate. Yeah. We ran well over time and not you, it's me. I know it's me. I get a little bit excited about some things that probably don't matter to normal people. But when we're talking about the Patriot, it's just, it all it just comes out. That's it. Um, what we might do, look guys, if you want to know a little bit more on the chassis, fundamentally you can watch any of the other virtual tours, X1N, X1H or X1, and get that information. Let's get into the good stuff, yeah? Sounds Let's get good. into the things that make the X3, the X3, and what makes it so different from everything else. I think the first thing we're going to get into is we're going to, uh, let's have a look at the XO rack system, the first roof rack system on any Patriot camper. <laughs> Yeah. 
Now you can see in that uh, brief introduction there the versatility of the XA rack system. The XA rack system has been designed exactly for that reason. There's no better word to offer more versatility into your camper trailer. Now, having the ability of, of working with composites and getting into new materials, which is what this lid is made out of, um, it gave us it, it, it ga really gave us that ability to add more storage space. Now, over the years. Um, you've seen with us, with Patriot Games, if we want to put a boat on top of the camper trailer or all the rest of it, we usually take a toy hauler. But there's things like kayaks, swags now for the kids because of the accommodation that I spoke about in the introduction on how the kids would like to camp. This is why we needed a little bit more storage area. And I can say, uh, Tommy, that is a good view of you from here, mate. Is it? it good. Mate, you're looking, you're looking sharp, like <laughs> GQ man of the month. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I appreciate that. Um, mate, look, give us, give us a run through. Give us a run through the XA rack system. I will do indeed. Yeah, look, love this uh, system. It's perfect for, like Justin said, loading up those kayaks, swags, push bikes, that sort of stuff, um, without having to load up your car. Um, you know, with this, and, and I'll get up here, there's a handy little step here that we can sort of step up and, and have a better access to this. Now, this option, um, this trade has been optioned with the, in, um, the uh, remo removable solar panel. So I'll get my words out. Uh, so you can actually remove this off the side uh, and I will actually um, do that and show you guys how, how that all works. I think everyone wants to know. So Prob a, Probably worthwhile pointing out while you get around there, uh, Tom, that is an option on the X-ray, correct? Correct, yeah, that is an option, um, but nice and easy to use. Um, perfect uh, for carrying that sort of stuff. As you can tell, um, well, they can be sort of bulky items, um, so a little bit of storage. But what's great about it, and I'll show you in a second, there's got a nice little handle, you can, you can pull that off. There's the sun, oh, that's about there. Um, they actually come with these nice little legs so you can angle it um, towards the sun. But it comes with a couple of different um, cords as well, um, so you can plug it in. Now you've got a short one here that you can plug in while it's attached to the top of the trailer and just into your input here, so you can attach it there. So, you know, you can keep that, those batteries charged up if something ever happened um, to your, um, you know, charging off your car, so that's good. And you also get a 10 metre cable, uh, sorry, five metre cable here, um, so you can plug it in and, and run it wherever you like uh, on your trailer. So, and they can be stored absolutely anywhere. Uh, but getting back into the rack, um, what's great about these as well is they're fully adjustable in your slot. So depending on what accessory you put in, and it will suit any sort of right, um, any rack um, accessory, um, whether you're carrying jerry can holders or uh, kayak holders or bike holders. These will suit those grooves, or if even if how, you just mount sorry, some mate. How, how tight can we get that camera in on those T slots, Tom? Can we get we got a bit of zoom there? Okay, so yeah, you can see those, and I think that's a really good point um, that everybody needs to be aware of. Those T slots in that um, in that extrusion that we've developed, they will accommodate, uh, as far as the testing that we've done, any brand of roof rack accessory. So if you have existing kayak holders, bike holders, uh, eyelets, whatever you want to put in there, you can put in there. And all of those crossbars, if you come out a little bit wider, they come standard with four crossbars, which are adjustable in the slots, uh, like Tommy was just explaining. But if you did want to turn that into a full platform at the top, you can order it as an, as an accessory, more crossbars to adapt that roof rack um, system to however you like to travel. It's a big mouthful there, isn't it? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of information. There is a lot of information. Look, absolutely right. And, and you know, these bars are really, really strong. So um, load rating on these, uh, I believe is sort of uh, 100 kilo, um, Dynamic. Dynamic uh, and static, I think it's about 200 if I'm correct, Justin. Oh look, static load rating, we probably, uh, we probably shouldn't get into a static load rating. Um, it is, that's a little bit subjective, um, but in a dynamic force, we will say 100 kilos is more than uh, ample. Um, and look, that's, that's pretty much an industry standard. I think that you'll find any roof rack that you buy for any vehicle. Um, that's about as far as the manufacturer will go. There, there are other things that come into play when it comes to that static load rating. Perfect, excellent. Um, yeah, so we spoke about the adjustability of those racks uh, and, and what you could carry up there. Um, you do need to remove those accessories if you are um, opening up the tent, um, but, and you will find it's gonna be a lot easier to do that. And for the, the gas struts, they're built to hold this, not other things.
And while you're down there, Tom, we'll probably just uh, talk about before we move to the next section, the construction of the lid. Um, it's the same construction method that we use on the X1H that we showed um, last week. It's a vacuum infused composite glass. There's some composite materials in there. Um, the, the actual shape that you can see there at the back there, those three ribs at the back, um, they've been designed and, and tested in CAD space um, for diffusing air or the air blow that you force on the back of the camper trailer. Now being a rear entry and same with the X1, what we want to try and do is push, put a downward force on top of that air that swirls at the back of your camper trailer and starts penetrating at your dust seal. So a lot of work has been uh, done on that. It obviously has insulation uh, properties uh, being Raptor coated um, and the Raptor coating is something that's brand new for us as well that um, we introduced um, this year with this product. Um, no, sorry, that's a lie. We use it on the, uh, on the X1H um, and the Raptor coating we find is a much more aesthetically pleasing coating over <laughs> rhino coating but we still use rhino coating on, on the uh, on the stone absorbing parts of the trailer because it's, it is a rubberized coating and it, it lasts a lot longer and works a lot better so that being said um, I think that that about wraps up Tom you got any more on the exo rack there mate you about hey, done you've done a great job covering that I think we've done a great job we this, have Tom. done as we. the team there's no iron team Tom <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> sounds Let's, good Let's move over to the kitchen. Let's get into the kitchen section. The kitchen on the X3, what can I really say about it? I think we've taken uh, something that was perfect and turned it into something else on another level. Um, the operational features of the X3 kitchen are the same as an X1 when it comes to the use of bench space, the actual layout and the L-shaped kitchen, but we've added in uh, a lot of wants and desires that we've heard from customers over the years and even us as a family camping. I think the biggest one for us is the fridge capacity, which Tommy will get into in a minute. And now with the addition of the overhang due to the shape of the X-ray, actually, if we go back to, let's have a look at Tommy over there. Tom, mate, you're just all over it today, eh? I'm all over it, mate. You're, you're looking good. That, okay. um, you can see that shape at the back of the X-ray there um, with that rake at the back. It's given us about another 300 millimetres of, of kitchen space, which uh, Tommy will get into with you guys right now. Thank you, Justin. Yes, uh, it's, it's perfect and, and now extraordinary, I reckon. Um, you know, the fact that everything sort of comes together through all the trailers into, you know, what is you know, the, the luxury uh, living. So I'm just going to open the door, I'm going to pull out the, the fridge first. And on here we've got a, uh, a Waco CFX3, 75 litre. I'm going to pull out the, uh, the sink as well. And I'm, so basically, with the sink, um, hot and cold water to the sink. Uh, we do give you a stabiliser leg um, to give you a little bit of uh, stability there and we also supply you with a drainage hose so you can drain the water away from there. Uh, as all of the models, uh, you get a plate storage, wet sponge storage, okay, and also your cutlery drawer, okay. So everything sort of has its place and really easy when you finish washing up, boom, straight in there, um, nicely packed away. The fridge though, I mean, it is, it is amazing. Um, How being is able, it? Being How able to have 75, 75 litres uh, in, in one of these trailers is, is absolutely excellent. Um, now this one, um, we'll get into it shortly, um, being the, du the dual lid you can actually access it from inside. So that's really good um, and look, the, the storage is amazing. Um, you like this fridge don't you Justin? I, I, th I think that fridge is a game changer. Look, I can't take all the credit for that fridge. That was, um, that was really the rest of the team here at Patriot Campers that really forced that into that, this model. For me personally, when I'm traveling, whether I'm towing a camper trailer or not, I always have a fridge in the back of the truck, always. It's just, that's just 101 for me, if in case of a breakdown or a failure, but more importantly, we're always traveling with five. So for me, the 50 or 60 liters that were in the X1, I thought were enough, I thought it was sufficient. Um, and the, the, the whole team here from sales, engineering, customer service, they were like, mate, if we're bringing out a new trailer, we need a bigger fridge. And now after using it, wow, it's, it, it, it is an amazing bit of gear. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And I'm looking forward to taking this thing out for a while. 
Opening up this side uh, is going to give you access um, to, to your now L-shaped kitchen. Um, it's loved by everyone. Um, it's a massive factor for a lot of people when they're buying a camper trailer. Um, the storage on this is, is fantastic. You've got a space there for a coffee machine or anything else uh, with access to power points, um, more shelving systems. This one I think is a big, a big game changer for the kitchen uh, in the X-Range is lifting this drawer up so that when you have something here, you don't have to move out the way to get the drawer out. So look, really um, well done to the engineering and design team and making that. Now, that has a little light inside so you can see what's in there. Typically salts, peppers, teas, coffees, oils, and that sort of stuff. Uh, you could do coffee mugs under there. Um, and then you've got another drawer here, great for those large utensils, spatulas, uh, barbecue tongs, uh, alpha, all that sort of stuff. And I'm not gonna forget it, because it's in this kitchen as well, is the spice rack in the corner. Uh, I can feel some uh, make it eyes at me, making sure that I'm mentioning that. Um, <clears throat> and of course, the two burner stove, which is standard on every Patriot camper. Um, so two burner with a grill. Uh, you do um, remove the gas bottle, you hang it under here on the conveniently located hook uh, and plug it in using the hose supply. Uh, are really good for cooking those veggies up, making toast in the morning and that sort of thing. Uh, also, um, I won't forget is these large bench tops. Now, because it is a larger kitchen, you've got more bench space. So when you are got a few more to cater for, uh, you've got enough space there, you don't need to bring out the extra table uh, to do that. Rymex bench tops, a stainless steel um, scratch resistant bench top. The Patriot range is the barbecue swingway with the baby Weber queue attached. So under there, pull that out. And that sort of completes your kitchen. You've got two sources of cooking. You can get that sort of real grilled barbecue taste uh, with the barbecue uh, and then have your veggies on the boil over there. Um, but I don't think it gets much better than that. And I suppose, look, from a user point of view, that, that, that right there, that is fundamentally where a Patriot kitchen comes into its own. And that's why when we were designing the X-Ray and we, we brainstormed what can we do better with the kitchen, there wasn't really a lot that we could improve on besides the fridge space. That, how you see Tommy in that frame right now, if you can picture on the left of Tommy right now, that's where I stand when it's meal time and I'll be on the barbecue having a few beers, kids out playing, Sarah on the other side of the kitchen, on the, on the opposite side of the fridge, preparing, doing whatever she needs to do. And you can picture, you can really get that picture there of how much bench space there is. In fact, there's 27% more storage and bench space in an X3 kitchen. That's it, Tom, that's, exact, that's about me right now <laughs> while, the, while the lid's down and the sausages are cooking. Um, in a Patriot, um, in a Patriot X3 compared to an X1. But you can see there are two definitive food preparation areas. And for us, when we go camping, it's just as much about the food as it is about the destination, eh? it really is. Tommy, while you're there, let's touch on uh, one, walk around, show them the new gas bottle holder, mate. Oh yeah. It might seem a bit trivial, but this, this thing's pretty cool. Oh yeah, so you've got one there, um, and then you've got this right here, so absolutely. Um, in the other models, you do have to um, drop them in here. With our gas strut there, we're just gonna lift this up and pull it out. And you can put your gas ball in, strap her in, uh, and away you go. So that's really cool, I love that feature. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good very little handy. feature on the X-Ray. Um, one other thing that we haven't touched on in any other video, Tommy, if you wanna go around to the airbag controller, um, yep. let's have a look at the, the bench tops. And this is, uh, I've come across this quite a few times um, when I've been at trade shows or, or talking to customers um, that might want a lower bench top or a higher bench top, or if you pull up on a trail and you're out unleveled and you're trying to cook and you've got pots and you've got young kids around and all the rest of it, can be very dangerous. Um, obviously leveling the airbags, let's just show them how that works. Yeah, so if we want to sort of bring it up a little bit, we can. And obviously if we want to raise it down, as well, we can do that. And look, it's perfect, you know, especially if the, the cook Tommy, is- Tommy, do, do it, just sorry, mate. Sorry to interrupt, just hit it again there because we didn't actually uh, catch that. If we stay wide on that camera. You can see there the trailer coming up on one side. And we'll drop him back down. And it's really that simple to level your camper trailer. 
All right, Tommy, I think that's where we'll wind up the kitchen section. We'll, we'll come back uh, a little bit later on uh, to that area when we go through this, uh, the electrical uh, system. So let's, um, let's run right now into the services. All right, so the services in the Patriot um, X-Ray. Now this thing, I'm gonna start off by saying this has everything that you need when it comes to services, and by services, power and water. Um, the power system in the Patriot X3 is completely state of the, the art. It is, um, it's, it's next level stuff. We've used everything that we know about uh, electrical wiring and electrical componentry. We teamed up with Red Arc a couple of years ago with their introduction of the, uh, of the TVMS system and we've really taken that to the full heights here in the Patriot X3. So Tommy, let's, um, let's start with the TVMS and the, the, the whole control panel system. We'll have a bit of a run through uh, what the X3 has different to the other models. So yeah, so the TVMS guys is, is a standard feature on an X3. Um, teamed up with your airbag suspension, a 1500 watt inverter and of course the diesel hot water system as well. So the main thing as well uh, is you've got one water level gauge uh, rather than two. So you just draw, you've just got a reading off uh, those two combined. You can access all your lights, uh, turn them on, turn your fridge on and off here. Um, see what your charge is doing, um, how long you've got left, what, where your charge is coming from, um, and access any other thing there. Just at the tip of your fingers, again, Bluetooth, Bluetooth compatible, so you can, with your phone, be inside, uh, especially on this one where you will be sitting inside, you can turn things, lights on and off, just using your phone rather than getting out and, and uh, outside. Uh, really nice feature as well um, is obviously your, your 12 volt. Now we've got a few of those. So there's two inside the trailer, two on the back of the trailer and two inside the kitchen. So charging is no problem at all. Even inside, we'll show you when we get in there, there's a pull up power point. Um, so you can plug, you know, your normal sort of uh, 240 volt sort of uh, appliances uh, into the, the sockets without using adapters and your USB charging points as well. So charging phones at night is also really important. Now there's a feature under here that Justin, I'm gonna let you talk about this because I know you're pretty excited about it, is being able to charge um, or use powered um, appliances while you're off grid. Yeah, look, the, the 240 volt system in this was, was really, when I said before, when we've taken it to the next level, this is where we've gone uh, for a camper trailer. Now specifically, you, you don't really see camper trailers with the levels of systems um, that are inside the X-Ray. Now the X-Ray has the ability uh, to run that 1500 watt inverter. Um, we'll get to it a little bit later on, so you can run appliances like coffee machines, small hair dryers, small toasters, those types of things. But I suppose with the 240 volt uh, system, number one for us, it's all about compliance, ensuring that we comply with the Australian standards and now the United States standards. So it's worthwhile stating here, if you purchase an X-Ray in the United States, you'll get a 110 volt system with US style 110 volt plugs. Now you can see there that you've got two outputs, but what you do have the ability to do on the X3 is you have the ability to change over your power consumption, depending if you want to use shore power or if you want to use the power of the trailer. For example, you're out remote camping, you're gonna run that 240 volt system off your 1500 watt inverter. So you do have limitations um, to what, what uh, appliances you can run. If you're in a caravan park or somewhere that's powered, for example, you can run power straight into the X3. You flick that uh, switch over that was on the screen a minute ago, and then that converts you straight over to the shore power. So then you can run any style of appliances. You can run a vacuum cleaner off the X-ray if, if you actually wanted to. Um, and look, there's a lot of technology behind uh, the electronics and, and what goes into um, the X3, which we'll get into a little bit more later on. It's a little bit outside of what I do. I, you know, I cut steel for a living at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Tommy laughing there. Um, the electrical stuff is way beyond my head. I've got, I've got some people, some really good people here that can handle that. Um, let's talk about uh, water capacity, Tom. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, so 130 litres of water on an X3, okay, as standard. Um, and and look, that's, it's the, that's quite a lot, you know, um, when you're off the grid. Um, and you can obviously carry others on your, on your racks and more water if you need to. Um, but that's teamed up with a water pump. Um, 
and you can directly access to your sink, okay? And then we'll come around to here. And if you come around here, we've got water outlet on your drawbar, um, so you can fill up buckets, use hoses, and that sort of stuff there. And then you've got your diesel hot water system. We've got a water outlet there for your shower. Now typically we'd run a shower tent around sort of here, so it's nice and away from the camp, um, so it's not gonna get water through there. So easy to use. At the press of a button, it takes about 10 minutes for it to warm up, and away you go. Um, you can set timers for it to come on and off at certain times of the day, um, and it's already plumbed, ready to go. There's nothing else you've got to do apart from press that button. And then we'll talk about it as well when we get inside, but there's also a heating into the tent, so making that live-in style a little bit more luxury. Awesome, thank you Tom, thanks for that run through there. Now tonight we are going to introduce a special uh, guest into the show, so this is a brand new segment for the show. Uh, I think over the past couple of weeks we've really started getting into uh, some spaces or some areas of the, the camper trailers and our production methods and the advancements here at Patriot Campers um, that are a little bit outside of my technical uh, ability. So tonight we are going to introduce a brand new section, Tech Talk with Jack. Hey mate, how you doing? Good, thanks. How, how you feeling? You nervous? Comfortable? A uh, bit of both. Comfort, a little bit of nerves as well. Okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction here. So Jack is the engineering manager here at Patriot uh, Campus. How long have we been working together, Jack, even outside of Patriot? Oh, gee, it must be close to about 13, 14 years now? 13 years. So that must have been since I was about 10 years old. I mean, <laughs> like, what, I'm 24 this year or something like that. We've been working together for a very long time. Uh, Jack handles, uh, heads up the engineering department here. Uh, he's got a team of guys that, that work alongside him. Jack is gonna give you a little bit of an inside look of what goes into the heart, or, or the brains, I suppose is a better word, of the Patriot X-Ray. Over to you, mate. Cool. So um, this is what makes it work. This is our service module. Um, with everything Justin's talked about, the 240 volt, all the systems that are in there, all the tech that's in there, it takes about 400 metres of cabling to make it all work. Um, if you're coming over into the service module, this one's got lithiums in it. That's an option, normally it's AGM. You've got your Red Arc BMS here. You've got all your breakers over here, which are easily accessible inside the trailer. Um, all the connectors here go to the TVMS. TVMS sits just above this unit here. And then over this side we've got the two big heavy cables, that's power for the 1500 watt inverter, which sits about there. All red arc gear. Everything's red arc. So Pop. look, guys, I, again, for me, I, I still, I, I'm not immune to this stuff. I see these, these things every day going down the production line, and I get involved with the engineering team and the discussions when it comes to the electrical uh, systems inside uh, the Patriot. And look, realistically, for for people who do know a little bit about manufacturing or, no, or even know about wiring, you know, for your home enthusiasts, the level that we go to on the things that you cannot see inside a Patriot camper is what makes a Patriot what it is. Look at those connections that Jack's holding up, you know, you've got Deutsch connectors, all IP rated connectors. Those ones that you're holding in your hand, what are they called, mate? Uh, these are our latest thing, these are the MC2 connectors. Yep. So these work perfectly with all the sort of modular systems on the trailer. Yep. So everything for production is plug and play. We don't, you're not dragging wires through the trailer anymore. It's all, each, each component is like pre-set, pre-productionized, pre-assembled, and then it's just plug and play to assemble. And you know, everything's color coded, everything sets home. It's got its location, it's, it's foolproof. You can't stuff it up. And there's, look, there's, there's a couple of keys um, when it comes to that. Number one is from the pr uh, production point of view. Um, and as far as getting the complexity into the trailer, we're still having the ability to manufacture in volume. But I think a bigger problem th than that is if you look at the color coding on all of those connectors, what that ensures is in the future, if uh, one of our service agents, uh, Graham or Ryan, for example, that are on uh, tonight, or even if you're in a remote location, um, you got the documentation there, Jack. Can we actually? Uh, yeah, I've got a couple examples here. A couple examples. So I've got a, I guess what you call a complex one, you know, through to some 240 and then another simplified That's an X3? one. This is all X3. 
So you can see the level that we're going to, and we're going to that sort of OE style of manufacturing, not sort of, we are at the OE style of manufacturing when it comes to documentation, longevity, and having the ability to have these trailers serviced, but most importantly, fault find, you know? I, look, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a quick little story. I, I wired up a, a boat trailer. Oh, I just gave it away. If you've been watching our Instagram, I can't believe I just said that. I wired up a trailer with my kids in the garage that we built at home a couple of weekends ago and I struggled um, finding a fault just between the clearance light and the indicator light. Now, how do I have had a wiring diagram? <laughs> look at Jack, go back to Jack, look at him laugh, he loves it. <laughs> He's like, I can imagine what was going on in that garage. Uh. Um, but when it comes to that fault fighting, it means that remotely we can diagnose majority of issues. And one thing I can say from a service and warranty perspective, and we monitor these things here on a weekly basis, is the warranty um, issues when it comes to electrical systems have gone completely down the drain as the systems become more complex. And that's just, that's amazing. That's due to the stuff that you see here. Back to you, Jack. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's complex, but it breaks down really simple now for production as well. So it's all, it's all quick and easy. I mean, I stole this one off the production line, the Savo, um, and I pushed the guys. I know they had a couple minutes left to build it. I've got to get it back pretty early in the morning too. But awesome. So you'll be in here first thing in the morning. Not like you're not the first one in here every morning anyway. Yeah. Um, mate, look, I think in the interest of time, we might leave it at that there tonight. That gives a bit of a, a, bit of an insight. Uh, Jack, thank you very much, mate. Um, no I worries. hope everybody could understand his accent there. Um, and yes, like last week's show with Tommy, Jack is actually a Kiwi, whereas Tommy is not a Kiwi. Tommy, are you not, a Kiwi or? I'm definitely not a Kiwi, mate. Okay, so Tommy, look, I think, um, mate, look, the next section, I'm just going through the run sheet now. The next section we're gonna get into is accommodation, mate. We're, we're almost sitting in an hour. I think we're going to have to get through this quite quick. In the interest of time, we might avoid the entire setup. Um, what I'd probably like to you to do before we do get into the accommodation part, um, mate, do you want to just flip that lid over? Oh, yeah. I've got a bit of a plan here. Can you just show us how the lid works on the x-ray? I will indeed, mate. And I know the control room's going a little bit crazy right now. They're like, oh, Justin's off target. What's he doing? <laughs> ah, everyone's going crazy. So look, there's a couple of latches, um, front and rear. Um, and then it's just a case of opening up the door nice and easily, dropping that down. And once that's there, you just sort of push it over and away you go. And that happens just that quick. Just that quick. Okay, here's my plan. Um, we're gonna get into, we're gonna go to a short break. Um, Tommy, during that break, mate, do you want to finish that uh, camper trailer set up? We'll come back and we'll go through it all with de in detail with you guys, but I know right now, if you and I try and talk through this right now, this is going to go for half an hour, 45 minutes, and we are simply just going to run out of time. Let's switch over right now uh, to the show that is the platform that shows what Patriot Campers is really all about the heartbeat of what drives this business and drives everybody inside of this business, and that's camping and touring. Let's go to a break. Let's have a look at the trailer for Series 3 of Patriot Games.
I still, to this day, get goosebumps um, when I watch that trailer, that soundtrack, and just, you know, it brings all those memories back. If everybody's been watching uh, the current season of Patriot Games, I hope you're enjoying it. We're getting towards the end. Um, there's only a few episodes left, and Tommy, let's, let's flick to that shot of Tommy right now. I have never in my life seen a camper trailer set up that quickly, and Tommy, you must be sweaty. Mate, um, look. <laughs> <laughs> that was wild. I actually put a comment there on YouTube while you were doing that. I said, I wish this wasn't playing right now so everybody could see Tommy work. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I said, so everybody can see Tommy sweating. All right, so let's, right now, let's get into, I think, the main section that everybody's probably signed in to see on the X-Ray, the accommodation. You can see there in that, in that quick little intro, the X-Ray has really de been designed with all styles of camper trailers, uh, camper trailers, campers in mind, from young families uh, to young couples uh, to the grey nomads. And we see it happen here a lot. We see a lot of grey nomads here over the years of Patriot Campers. Uh, people, and look, camping is not for everybody. Camping is a lifestyle, it's not caravanning. They're two completely separate things. Um, and, the, and the first objective, I think, for anybody who works, walks into one of the Patriot Campers dealers is really understanding the needs of that customer. There, there's a, a real definitive line in the sand for me, and I know Tommy will back me up on this, but besides somebody who wants to go caravanning and somebody who wants to go camping, we, are, we produce camper trailers, and I feel like we produce the best camper trailers, but now we have a camper trailer that really starts teetering on the edge of what a camper trailer really is, what it's all about. So let's get on to the inside of the Patriot Campers X-Ray. Um, let's flick over to Tommy, and Tommy, run us through the interior on that, uh, that X-Ray, mate. Thanks, Justin. I think the big thing, I was sitting here when you're going through that, I'm like, where do I start? I mean, <laughs> there is so many features, um, but I suppose we should start where I'm sitting, um, in the sort of lounge area. Uh, look, it, it's, it's huge, it's very comfortable. You've got some really nice um, cushions throughout the whole thing, so no matter where you are, you've got somewhere to lean. Um, but even more importantly, um, there's so much storage in here as well. Um, I'll get into that in a second, but I want to see if the cameraman can sort of dive down here, how we're looking, uh, to the uh, table. Um, that you get as a standard option. Um, really nice feature um, for having a coffee in the morning, having your breakfast. Even if you're uh, on, on site doing some work, that sort of stuff, um, really, really handy. Now, if you're not using that, for the families, you can actually option in a kid's bunk. Um, so you can fill this whole space um, as, as one sort of area. Now, we can also lift this up, and this becomes uh, a sort of a single bed, as it were. Let me just get that right. So it's a single bed for, you know, someone who's, yeah, what would you say, Justin, what's, how, how big's Mia? Oh, Mia's, look, I couldn't tell you in centimetres. She's not, she's not particularly tall, but she's 13, and she sleeps quite comfortably there. Actually, I think we might have, guys, do we have an image there of the, the twin kids' bunk? Do we have one? There we go. So you can see there on the left, you can see that the, the fold-out kids' bunk on the left set up. If you option in the second bunk, uh, to the left hand side where you can see my little niece, um, my gorgeous little niece sitting there and my nephew as well, I know Sebi will probably get upset. Um, the <laughs> pair of them, um, that's actually my brother Bobby's kids and you can see the pair of them there a little bit younger, oh, I couldn't tell you their exact ages, that's really bad. I think Seb is four and Jids is two and a half or, th or three. I know Sarah can maybe correct me a little bit later on. Um, but it opens up into this massive space that is really comfortable for two young children, which is what, it, what it's all about. On the right hand side, you can see my three kids there, two 16 year old boys and, and my 13 year old daughter, um, quite comfortable on the interior. Is that it? Is that all we've got for interior shots there, guys? Yep, okay, so that's it. Um, Tom, back over to you. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for those little shots uh, to explain it a lot more. Yeah, as I, as I said, this is amazing. But what I really love about this feature is, and, and the X3 is the fact that if, the kid, if you put the kids to bed early and you want to get into bed, you don't have to climb up over them. On the other side, and the camera around, I'm sure, let's just go and have a quick look at that. There's a ladder um, so that you can sneak, it, sneak into bed at night 
or hop out um, to go to the bathroom and without disturbing the kids. So for me, that's a really, really good feature um, to be able to do that, um, stay up and have a few rums at night. Tommy, I might, I might actually just change this up a little bit while you're out there, mate. I think, I think you yeah. might be a little bit out of sequence. Can we get a nice wide shot of that whole thing set up with the awning and the tent? Uh, Tommy, you want to just come out towards the camera so we can get that whole, that whole camper trailer in frame because it'll give everybody a bit of uh, perspective now it's set up. Um, you can see that hexacore awning there on the left, which I think we might even, sorry, sorry to do this to you, mate, but we might run through that while you're outside and then we'll finish up inside. Yep. Um, and you can see that the tent on the side. Um, the Pcor awning, mate, the hexacore awning, do you want to give us a quick run through on that? Yeah, it is, it is quite something. Uh, it's so light and, and easy, the, the material's so workable. Um, so when you're packing away, it's not sort of stiff. Um, like a typical sort of canvas that you kind of have to sort of mould and wait for it to loosen up. It's already workable. I love, again, if these little pockets that you have in them um, to hide you got the guy ropes. So no longer have you got to attach guy ropes. They're already there and they just tuck away in these little pockets there so you can create your downward sort of um, wash off for the rain, so if it's raining. Also being fully adjustable, if it is raining, you can raise them up, you can raise them down and really create that, uh, that water runoff. And of course, if it's windy, um, there's a little, the, the little foot there swivels so you can get a peg into that as well. So uh, we sort of touched on it um, before, Justin, is, is the fact that you don't have to, you know, tighten up the pole and then really loosen to sort of adjust your poles. All you do is just adjust that and that's where the foot stays. And so for anybody who's ever been camping before, and I think I've said this in previous um, videos, it's all about steps. It's about eliminating steps for me. Everything that you can make that little bit easier when you're on a big touring uh, trip, you're setting up day in, day out. It's the little things like that. Uh, typically on an awning, um, and this is one of the real, look to some people it might seem like a very minute detail, but this is some of the clever designs that we do here at Patriot Campers that we think a little bit left field because we actually use the stuff. We actually use the products first and foremost. We develop them uh, for us. So little things like you can see there, um, that, that little toggle right there makes it easier to pull uh, the magnetic uh, legs out of the awning when they're folded up. But back to that swivel base foot, anybody who knows who's pegged an awning down before conventionally, you peg an awning down, you have to pull the peg out if you want to twist the pole to adjust it up and down. With this one here, you actually don't need to do that. So there's, Tommy, I'll, I'll, I'll let you keep going through and maybe I'll jump in at the end, mate, because this, <laughs> this product for me is you love one it, of the you? most... What was that? You love it, don't you? It's one of the most... Um, exciting developments here at Patriot because we have taken a product that already exists and is already well known and I think we have improved it that much more from a usability point of view. We have mate, we have, you're absolutely right and look I love it, I just, you know, I, I can't wait to get to use it more. Uh, what I also love is this, you've got your integrated light in the awning, there's no plugging wires in, plugging into 12 volt, using up your 12 volt for this sort of lighting, it's just nice and easy touch it on, touch it off, it's all built. I believe there's little Deutsch plugs in the back there. Really, really cool, I really love that feature. The best bit though, and you know, if you're having a barbecue out the front, you've got cover here, and I'm gonna pull that out because this is really good. So if the, you know, if the weather does come in a little bit, you're not sort of messing around with another step, like you said, Justin, it's eliminating the steps. Feel that, I'm still cooking under the barbecue, uh, without having to zip anything else on. So, so yeah. for the people who don't know, uh, again, with an, with an X1 or any of the other range of camper trailers, that porch that you can see over the top of Tommy right now, that's an, an accessory that you would have to zip on, put out another two bowl, poles, put on another two guy ropes. Um, with the new peak or awning, it's fully integrated and it comes out um, as one. Yeah, love. I just love this feature, this, this whole thing. Uh, I think they've done very, very well. Uh, and not forgetting, and the sort of soft, soft touch button so you can dim um, that light and obviously turn it back on depending on what sort of mood you want to have in the kitchen area. Okay, before we, uh, before we move on to the next section, um, before we move on to the tent, I'll talk about the hexacore material. The hexacore material is now a patented material that was developed um, here at Patriot Campers. 
uh, with a massive textile manufacturer overseas. It's not manufactured in Australia and we don't make any, any secrets about that. Textiles are not typically produced here in Australia um, in large quantities. Now this is a new style of material. It breathes better than canvas. It is more um, tear resistant than canvas, so it's stronger than canvas. Um, it's heat reflective as well. There's a silver lining. If we can get a shot of that underside there, um, there's a silver lining underneath that um, creates a, a heat reflective barrier. Now we've done some testing against canvas and some other materials on the market here at Patriot Campers and time and time again it comes in up to five degrees uh, cooler underneath. Now the other big thing about this material, this is a massive one for us, um, it has been rated as a SPF 50 plus. Um, and it is um, flame retardant as well. So it will not uh, catch on fire. Um, it'll just, it, it'll, it'll simmer and, and kind of burn away. Um, let's, let's put it over the top. Hey. <laughs> Mate, you are in form tonight. Fine hey. form tonight. No more beers before we go live in future, Tom. I bet you're asking what's in that bag, aren't you? What did you say? I bet you're going to ask what's in that bag. Everyone's All right, Tommy, <laughs> fill us in. What's in the bag? Oh, the bag. In the bag. So in this very compact bag is all six walls for this awning. I mean, it weighs probably, I don't know, not very good with weights, but call it seven kilo. Um, and it just fits in this tiny little bag. And then with those walls, they Velcro on and they zip together and they taper out. Uh, so it gives you more space under the awning. So you can really enclose this area if the weather comes in or you're looking for privacy. Do we have a shot of that, Justin? Tommy, I, I, the here is something I prepared earlier. Let's have a look at the walls kit and how, how it works. But sometimes, Mother Nature has other plans. When the rain starts spitting, when the cold creeps in, when the wind won't let up, we're still unstoppable. Um, and the walls kit. So that, that shoot that you can see right there, that footage that you just watched, I was actually there for that uh, video shoot. And that was just absolutely belting down. And the way this awning and that walls kit held up and kept everyone dry underneath, I was absolutely blown away. If we go back to the early days of, uh, of Patriot Campers when we used to... Oh, is this a heritage moment? This might be a heritage moment. If we go back to the early days of uh, Patriot Campers, we used to have on our options list a full awnings walls kit. Um, it was very, very, very expensive. There's a lot of canvas involved, a lot of work involved. Uh, very difficult to set up. Uh, and the bag was literally, any of Patriot owners that are online right now, back me up on this. If you have one of the old canvas walls kits, the bag was literally sort of this, called 700 mil by about 700 mil, and it was about 300 millimeters thick. And that canvas bag would have weighed, I would say, somewhere around eight to 10 kilos. And the thing was just a nightmare to set up and we took it off the options list because it was just too hard. Now, if we flick back to that shot of Tommy, hey. you can see how comfortable he is with his awning walls. He could so take it shopping, he could take it to the beach. Sometimes I take it to the gym. While walking the dog, you could it. chuck it on your back and you wouldn't even know it's there, right? You wouldn't even, oh. <laughs> All right, we're, get, we're getting off topic. Um, let's have a look at the tent, Tom. Let's have a look at the outside of the tent. No problem. Now, the tent is, um, is still Australian canvas, Coolabar canvas. Um, that's the material that we use right throughout uh, the Patriot models. Um, it is, it's one of the lighter canvases um, that are on the market, but on the market that, that, is, um, that is produced here in Australia. And the reason for that is obviously we want to keep the tear weight down of the trailer. Um, we find with the tropical roof, you're double, doubling up on the canvas thickness, but obviously the other big one for us is when you go lighter uh, in that weight of the canvas, the canvas is actually more breathable. So when you get into the situation of condensation, um, that's, that's where that material really comes into play. So let's have a quick look around it, Tom. Yeah, look, uh, absolutely. Now, I, d I did want to show, show everyone, because um, I'm sure it's a question asked, oh, what happens with the awning and the tent? Well. You've got this sort of flap here that connects directly to the awning um, using Velcro, then stops any rainwater getting in between here. Um, so again, on the rain front, yeah, we've got you covered there. Another really nice window um, is at the back, and um, you've seen in some of the footage there, um, being able to sort of have this open, still get the breeze through the camper um, without having to shut all the windows up. Um, so that's an, another really great feature, and these bows really easy to put in. Um, with the tropical roof as well, that's going to help a lot with your, 
your sun uh, and your rain uh, runoff, so it's going to really protect you from the elements. Uh, but it's just such a easy, uh, it gives you a great sort of environment inside the camper, um, and I think the colour's perfect. Look, the, all of the materials used right throughout the Patriot campus is the best of the best. Probably one that we haven't touched on before is even the, the fly screen. Uh, when it comes to the screens that are in the, the Patriot in the early days when we were, um, we were getting uh, tents manufactured overseas from one of the suppliers, the biggest problem that we had um, came, uh, was fly screen mesh. Now we're, we're obviously manufacturing all of these tents here in Australia using majority Australian materials. Uh, the actual mesh that you see there is manufactured, I believe, in Japan. I could be wrong. It's called Heroku Mesh. We actually have some videos here when we were specking that material of two Land Cruisers having a tug of war. Uh, have you seen that video, Tom? No, I haven't. Remind me tomorrow and I'll dig it out. The engineering team have all seen it. It's amazing. Two Land Cruisers having a tug of war with that Heroku fly screen mesh yeah, wrapped right. around the tow balls and they're pulling both trucks uh, as hard as they can and they can't break the mesh. So, Fantastic. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing stuff. All right, Tommy, you want to jump, um, jump back inside? Oh, yeah. And let's pick up where I dragged you out of before. Okay, yeah, um, we will. And I just noticed as I walked in, is the flooring. Um, you know, really durable. Um, it's, yeah, it's perfect. It's going to wear a long time um, coming with everyone, sort of the traffic walking in and out of this. So, so that's, that's a really good feature there. Have you got anything else to add on that, Justin? The floor? Um, yeah, look, the, the floor, look, it, it, might be worth, um, it might be worth actually stating this here because this is the first time that we've used any timber products in any Patriot camper lineup. That's actually a lined marine ply and it's, it's a coin plate uh, rubber that sits on top. The durability of this, and again, when we were doing the research on all the materials, we really wanted to sound dead in that floor and uh, thinking about high traffic uh, directly on that aluminium, uh, the aluminium sheet um, that's sitting underneath it. So that, that whole box that you, that you see underneath that floor there is completely sealed. And the inlay is that uh, marine grade ply with that rubberized coating over the top. Uh, and the durability, I don't remember the spec off the top of my head, um, but that was the, the most durable floor that we could find. So you can broom it, you can mop it, you can gurney it, you can hose it out. Um, you know, one of the, you've got a young kid there that has an accident or makes a big mess there with food or whatever. Uh, you've got no, no problems in cleaning it out and washing everything straight over that back step. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Look, I suppose let's get into these features. Uh, access to your fridge while inside the camper trailer. Um, you've got access to, to your um, milk and stuff when you want to sort of make a cup of tea in the morning. Um, have a bottle of water at night time. Uh, even grab something out the ice, uh, ice tray for a nice rum and coke. Um, opening up this one here. Uh, now this is an option, is the pop-up coffee machine. Justin, what do you drink? Latte? Cappuccino? Mate, short black for me, Dad. Short black? Okay, no worries. I'm not going to fire up now. It's short black. Oh, I don't want to hear, and I know Steve Mack is on the, on the YouTube right now because he's already making jokes. I don't, I don't want to hear any puns on that either, Steve. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so a lot of people ask me, Tom, you know, what if this, we don't option this? Well, look, you just get a free space in there, some more storage uh, for anything you really want to put in there. Um, to the side here, and I'm just going to pop this down, guys, so you can see a little bit better, uh, is your pull-up power point. Um, so you can plug in, you know, whatever you like in there with the USB. I spoke about it before, uh, charging phones at night, uh, etc. You'll see a and lot of the light strips throughout the, the trailer <coughs> there. Um, sorry, sorry, mate, I'll just jump in there. Um, that would obviously be a 110 volt system if you're in the United States and you purchase an extra in the United States. So that is adapted uh, to 110 volts. Excellent. Thanks, Justin. Um, yeah, going th uh, talking through the uh, uh, the lighting system in here. Now, I haven't brought it in with me, um, but I wonder if I could get it through the nice kitchen walkthrough. Yes, perfect. Um, is that you can actually sort of turn areas on and off as you need to um, using this handy little remote. Um, so you can sort of control all your lighting uh, and depending on what you're doing. Uh, using that. So that's pretty cool. I really like that feature actually. Uh, it's really good for you know, if the kids are sleeping you can close this sort of lights down here but keep your reading lights on. So that's really good. There's, there's different styles of lighting in there as well and, and, and I think that's um, that was the, probably the biggest thing that I noticed when I took it away over Christmas 
Uh, the different styles of lighting for different situations, say you've got the young kids asleep, you can dim all that lighting out. You can put the light on underneath the kids so it just gives you a glow that you can check on them. Um, there you go, you can see that lighting there or you can light up overhead if you needed that lighting. And Look, it, it might seem a little bit gimmicky uh, to some uh, to have zone lighting in a trailer of that size, but when you start utilising it, um, for your sort of style of camping or more to the point your your family's needs at that time um, it's it's absolutely amazing okay I suppose over to what a lot of people really you know, consider when they're camping is the bed um, now this bed here I'm gonna get on it in a second so you can see the size of the bed um, but all this can stay um, on it so you've got here we've got a sleeping bag a couple of pillows um, can stay on there and then it's a an inner spring gel top uh, similar to the, the rest of the range um, on there as well, so very, very comfortable. And they have this really good, and I'm just going to climb up over here, this sort of mesh st st stuff here that connects um, using just normal sort of clips um, to hold all your bedding in place. So obviously when you're folding the lid back over, your bedding's not going to all fall out. It all stays in place, so you're not remaking the bed or anything like that. It literally holds it just there. But I might have to actually just correct you there, Tommy, because I know that might come back and bite us at some stage. It's not an inner sprung mattress, it's a pocket sprung mattress. And the difference with that, an inner sprung mattress, Tommy knows that, he's aware of that. It's obviously you've just used the wrong word. Um, the, the, an inner spring mattress would feature like a, a normal sort of steel spring. That's why they call it an inner spring and there's a spring inside and a, a conventional sort of spring. With a pocket spring, it's an it's, uh, air pocket. So it's an air cell that gives the foam that spring, but then we've got that memory foam on top of that. And I think, again, any of our Patriot owners would back us up if you've got a, I think it was 2018 plus Patriot Campers X1 or X1H. Um, that mattress is just unbelievable. Uh, to put it into perspective, that mattress on its own weighs about 27 kilos. So it's not a piece of foam, uh, you know, a foam that you buy from Clark's or whatever and you chuck in there and it, you know, weighs three or four kilos. They are very, very expensive. They don't, they've got an absorption mat on the bottom. Uh, absorption mat. They've got, and what's the word here I'm looking for here, Tom? Mate, you are looking for a non-absorption uh... mat on the bottom of them. So again, for condensation, <laughs> if condensation builds up underneath the mattress, it's not going to suck through any of that foam and, and wet the top of your mattress. So they're a very, very high quality uh, Australian made product too. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, uh, apologies there, guys. Um, but look, look, now I'm lying on there. A lot of people ask how big's the, mat, the, the, the bed. Um, and I can comfortably say I'm sort of six foot. <coughs> And there's plenty of space up here, um, you know, and there's sort of plenty of space wide. Obviously, you can sort of sleep here. So two of you are going to sit up here comfortably uh, and even a third sort of small child uh, if they need to come into bed with you. But really nice space, really easy to get in and out this window. Uh, and using all these sort of foam cushions here, easy to get into um, without sort of hurting your knees or anything like that. All right, Tommy, mate, we are well, well over time tonight. Uh, we're going to have to move into the next section quickly. Before we do, can we just have a quick look at the storage areas uh, that are inside that, that lounge there, mate? Yeah, we will do. Um, so I'm just going to sort of come through here. Um, you've got these little drawer systems. Now, I love these in the back of the, um, the backrest. Perfect for sort of jocks and socks, you know, uh, that sort of stuff that you need. You know, everything in here so you don't have to sort of get out of the trailer before you sort of meet everyone in the day. Another great area is this. Lift up the seat. Have we got that cameraman? Uh, now, typically, if I was taking this away, that's where all my clothes would be. Um, you know, your jumpers, your, your let's, um, Mate, let's, let's show the two-way on that drawer. We have to show it. Let's, let's show that the dual access on that drawer. Um, that drawer is accessible uh, from inside and outside of the camper trailer. Uh, so the big advantage of that right there is in your garage at home, you can obviously load up with whatever you like, um, slide it in and then, and typically, uh, me personally, I'd be putting clothes and, uh, and pantry items in there. Um, you can slide that drawer closed and then when you're inside getting changed, the kids, the wife or whatever, um, you can, you've got full access to everything that you have there. Tommy, I'm going to have to cut you off there, mate. All good. Um, I think um, right now, what are, we, what are we doing right now? I've kind of lost where I'm at, yeah? We, we are so far behind time. Storage? Uh, it's not even funny. No, I, I think we're going to run into uh, my favourite section of the show. I think we're going to oh. bring in... I think we're going to bring in um, my favourite person. Okay. I think we're going to introduce to you guys right now... Um, 
Okay, we're ready. <laughs> we're, we're, a li we're a little bit out. I think we're going to introduce you right now um, the gorgeous, angelic, Thanks. sometimes feisty, the queen of our campsite, the patriarch of Patriot <laughs> Campers, and I can see her right there smiling. <laughs> Let's do Patriot Supply with Sarah. Hi guys. Hello. Something a bit different. It is, absolutely. Welcome to the, uh, the X3. Thank you. What are we doing? Today. I'm mesh gonna... mats, the Patriot Campers mesh mats. Do you have some for I me? I do indeed. Now conveniently located in the wet storage area, which is where you typically put one of these because they're generally dirty, covered in sand. Definitely. Uh, and they're just going to slide out of here. So now that is one bag there. It is, and you have these as well. So these are a really, really good product. Patriot decals, like all of our products, so they all match. Um, comes in a carry bag. You've got a 2.4 metre mat. I reckon we get it out, yeah? Yeah, let's take it out and let's have a look at how that looks. So what's it made of? So it's made of polyester, yep. but it's also got PU leather fibres, which um, adds to the strength. Also mildew. Oh, yeah. uh, resistant yeah. and UV resistant as well. Yeah. You've got your um, stainless steel eyelets for if you need to peg in. Let's pull this baby out. Okay. And two of these, so one of these will cover your kitchen area. Let's do the kitchen area. And if you get two, we can uh, sell two on Patriot Supply. We'll cover your whole awning area as well. That's it. Look at that. Put it there. Oh, love these. I like the fact as well with these that you can actually if you get any sand or dirt on there that you can actually just brush it off. Definitely, so anything big you can just brush straight off or it's gonna drop straight through. They're also eco-friendly. So if you set up for a long period of time, it's not gonna kill the vegetation underneath, which is a big thing as well. Absolutely. Um, one thing I've seen you do before, which is kind of cool, is I've seen your kids run around with this bag yeah. when you're all set up with all their toys running down to the beach and then you just go like that that's it, yeah, I love these bags. So what that's great for is, is uh, like you said, rather than losing all the toys in the surf, you can just take, put them in the bag, give them a good shake and wash them out before putting them back in the camper trailer. And also, Rose loves, obviously, filling them with shells. She does. Uh, so Mia can, always did too. Yeah, right, okay. So it must be a thing where you go and get the shells, uh, put them in there, give it a good shake and wash them all off and, and then typically it ends up back in there. Uh, and she wants to take them home with yeah. her. So. Quick hose, mildew resistant is a huge thing and UV resistant, um, you know, they're going to keep their life forever, which is a great thing and only one ninety nine on patriotsupply.com.au. What do you reckon, Justin? I, I don't know anybody else that could make a floor mat look that good, but... <laughs> Are you talking I, about Tommy or me? No, no <laughs> definitely not talking about Tommy. I don't know anybody else in this so world versatile. that could make floor mats seem so interesting. Right? And again, maybe I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> they are actually, we put so much into these. They are amazing. And on the X1 awning, you can actually have them so they hang up as a bit of a sunshade, but something you can see through you as can. well. Definitely. We do have, we actually do have a lot of customers that, that do that. And I've seen that a lot pack up uh, uh, on the social media feeds. Yeah. Uh, people using them as, as sunshades. So, Sarah, once again, thank you very much for gracing us with your presence, making this Anytime. show into something that me and Tommy obviously can't do. Um, <laughs> big round of applause, team. Patriot Supply with Sarah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> okay, all right. Now we're, we're kind of getting towards the end here, and Ooh. whoa, this has been a big one. Um, my brain is starting to fizzle out a little bit, and I'm starting to think, how do those, how do those news guys do it, you know, for an hour? Let's get into the next uh, section. Let's have a talk about the storage. Storage is a massive, massive part of design when it comes to uh, camper trailers or any type of touring or uh, equipment. Now, the biggest thing that I see here, maybe a little bit off topic, the biggest thing I see here at Patriot Campus is people fundamentally overpacking uh, for trips. A big recommendation that, that we make to all of our customers when they come in here and they do a handover, do not go out and buy everything that you think you need. Go out, get the necessities, go and use your camper trailer and add to it. 
But if you do go overboard, here's the advantage of a Patriot camper and all the designs of Patriot campers. Um, the storage on these things are second to none. You really need to go to a camper trailer that's almost double the size to be able to fit the amount of gear. You know, we have over 2,000 litres of storage in all of the Patriot X range of trailers and the X3 is definitely no different. So over to Tommy. Tommy, let's have a, a run through all of the specific storage areas in the Patriot X3. Okay, excellent. Well, we discussed one just then. This one of your wet storage box is huge. You can get the floor mats in there, recovery gear, muddy boots, all that sort of stuff goes in there. Now, with typically um, on the you know on the X ones, you do have two of those, but on this one, particularly come here, is you've got. Well, we're going to have to get a little bit of light in there. I might just steal one of these. You've got more storage in there. Now that whole wall kit fits in there. Throw it in. What's that? Throw it in. Get it in there. Oh, Where is it? I've got to get it in there. Come on, Hang get on. it in there. Che right. Check this out because I, me personally, I, ca I can fit in that side box. Um, I can put in the full walls kit and three Helinox chairs inside that side box. Have a look. It's in there and there's still more to go. So look, for that one, really good. It's fully dust proof, fully waterproof and lockable as well. So that's a really, really great compartment uh, for all those for a little bit more bigger, uh, bulkier items. But, put that light down there. A lot of people ask, you know, what about those bigger chairs though? You don't have the, the Helinox ones. Well, um, when this is closed, this is gonna be your rear access to in here. And much like the other camper trailers, when the canvas is folded down, this whole section underneath, if you come here, this whole section from here downwards is all storage. Um, so, you know, you can still take those bigger tables, uh, bigger chairs with you. So those bigger, bulkier items are still covered in the X3. Come this way. Obviously, you've still got the exo rack for storage. And we're going to come under here. Um, you've got another drawer here that you can use for a bag of pegs. So you can use for pegs, tools, whatever you like in there. Again, lockable and dust and waterproof. And then this area under here. Uh, now this here has got your um, an option to have a slide out here. So you can put a porta potty in there. So I'll just slide that out. But if you don't go for it, you just get a little bit more storage in there for something bigger and bulkier. Um, again, dust and waterproof, easy to access and easy to get to. And obviously when the tent's not sort of folded over, um, you, can, um, you can access that um, when you're loading up the camper trailer. We'll just go around. We're gonna work our way back around to the front uh, and talk about the man cave, which is, you know, for, for a lot of us, one of the places where you're gonna keep tools, straps, hoses, and things like that. Now, this light, fantastic. Um, there we go. <clears throat> You've got a utility shelf there. You can see I've already sort of stuffed up there. And that's how it's gonna look um, realistically. Also with your shower being here, you could put toiletries up on this um, little section there. So they're easy to grab when you're just gonna have a quick shower or showering the kids. Again, your barbecue swing away, which is an option, slides in there. But if you don't get that, you can get, uh, I think it's about four 20 litre jerry cans in there if you don't go for that. So that's a really good space uh, with tie down points as well. Uh, passionate, but, yep. passionate about storage. Tommy, passionate about storage. Passionate, I am passionate about storage. It's such, it's such a key point. You know, if you're ever camping, most of my customers do come from loading up the car and Tetris in the back of the car. I know I did. And by having a camper trailer, the storage is such a key factor. And it changes absolutely everything. All right, guys, I think that's about it for the walk around on the Patriot X3. Tommy, is there anything else that we need to add before we get you back up in here for the Q&A? Uh, look, guys, if you want to know more, please give us a call uh, and I can run you through uh, as well. All right, that, and I think like all Patriot campers uh, products, and I hear this time and time again, and this is the number one comment I get that I love hearing, and I love hearing it over and over again. Videos of Patriot campers do not do them justice. You need to get into one of the dealers. Go and touch one, feel one, see one in the flesh. Uh, the quality of these products are absolutely amazing. So whilst Tommy makes his way back up here, we're gonna go on another really short break. This is only a 40 second break. If you want to win a Patriot camper, and an Isuzu D-Max, and a Polaris Ranger, and a whole heap of gear valued to $150,000. Ensure you enter this prize pack.
To celebrate Season 3 of Patriot Games, we're giving you the chance to win the ultimate family touring package worth over $150,000. Enter now to get your hands on a brand new Isuzu D-Max kitted out to handle a Patriot Games adventure using the gear we know and trust. And if that's not enough, you'll also receive a Patriot Campus X2 to tow behind it. Plus, receive a brand new Polaris Ranger for the kids and loads of camping gear. Entries close June 30, 2020. Enter online now at patriotgames.tv. You know how I know we've done a good job tonight? What's that? I've just run through the question sheet, and there's not a lot there. Really? Yeah, we'll get we'll get through okay. them. We'll try cool. and get through them as quick as possible. And I can see a lot of them have been answered by Ryan and Graham, and by some of the other Patriot owners. So Perfect. guys, for getting involved, thank you very much um, for helping us out. So let's get straight into the Q and A. When does season four of Patriot Games start? I might I might go out on this one. Mm. We have we have plans. We're making plans on top of plans as the federal government keeps making and changing our plans. Okay. Yeah? Uh, season four of Patriot Games. Uh, guys, we were due, we were meant to be out filming right now, hence the reason we're doing the, the virtual uh, show uh, to fill in this time, um, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, would have been more fun in the destinations that we plan on going yes. to. Uh, at this point in time, we really can't say. What we can say is it will definitely uh, be going ahead and we'll be definitely airing in the early stages of 2021. If all of our plans come off outside of the COVID restrictions, this is going to by far be the biggest season of Patriot Games that you have ever seen. So keep an eye out for it. Uh, are you going to sell the peak or awning separately in the future? I have answered this question before. At this point in time, no. Uh, I'm not saying we're not doing it, but the concentration right now is to get the production line at full capacity uh, for the X-Ray and then we'll start investigating as to when uh, we will launch that product into the market. Yeah, it will be at some stage, I can't answer when. What is the wheel track width? Compared to a LC200, though my wheels are pushed out to 1672. Well, I don't know what the offset of your wheels are, but what is, that we can answer the first question, what is the wheel track width of the X-Ray, Tom? So it's 185 wide. 1.85 metres. Yeah. Metres wide. Um, so it typically sits pretty much dead in line with sort of the Prado, highlights yep. and that sort of thing. Yep. Uh, that sort of vehicle. Exactly. Okay. Um, what is the reason for having two water tanks instead of just one? Great question. There's two, two, <laughs> reason, two reasons for that. Two main reasons. One is design constraints uh, with the structural members of the chassis. Main reason is if you if you did split a tank, um, you've got a second tank as a backup, and that's really what it's all about. It's about having a, a fail safe there. Uh, why is there no USB on the 240 volt panel? Um, depending on the panel that you're referring to, if you're talking about the 240 volt panel that's in the kitchen, there's actually a twin USB above that panel just underneath the TVMS. Um, you can see now on the screen, if you're talking about the interior 240 volt panel, there is a USB uh, on the interior. Um, does the interior come in only that color? Yes, at this point in time, we are only offering one color of the interior. Uh, again, we don't know what we'll do in the future, but we don't have any plans to release another color. We didn't mention though tonight, X3s are available in the standard four Patriot colors. That's right. What yeah. are the colors? Tom? So the, the, the colors are um, white, um, graphite, uh, blue, or green, but they also come in standard as silver, which New color. is really, really cool. You've seen it on a lot of the clips today. That's yeah, yeah really, and really. And if you watch the, the launch film, the, the silver is a lot. It's classier. Yeah, in there, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like it's like a silver pearl. Uh, so it's not a flat silver. It's a really, really classy color. Be Be beautiful, quite color. durable as well. Isn't it? Yeah, in definitely silver. in silver. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um, can the table and the kids bunk both be installed or swapped over if needed? So. If, you, if you're referring to the standard kids bunk and the table, yes, that's what comes standard. If you option on the second kids bunk, then you either have to remove the table or put the bunk in, but you can swap them very easily in between trips. So if you wanted the table for one trip, or if you did want to carry it with you on your trip, yeah. you, can, you can switch them out uh, quite easily. How stable is the camper when fully set up? Very stable. <coughs> 
like you've got uh, the ladder there under the lid that's going to hold um, a lot of it but yeah you can be in there there's you know if someone walks into the trailer you know, your drink's not going to spill everywhere it's it's really safe if someone rolls over i think it's as stable as they they can be you know 100 percent. so it's got to stabilize a leg in the back rear on the uh driver's side if you're in australia and passenger side if you're in america <laughs> i suppose um, they've got a stabiliser on the rear, so what that stabiliser does is counteracts the weight of the lid. So when it's loaded and unloaded, obviously you've got a large weight transfer when you open that lid up and that stabiliser leg uh, holds it planted, running up and down the stairs, having four or five people inside, the trailer doesn't move, it's rock solid. Um, will the X3 have the additional kids room at a later date? I will answer that and say, we planned on launching it with the kids room. Uh, we couldn't get a kid's room uh, to work how we wanted it to work. And then we kind of decided, look, this really isn't the trailer. If you're looking to accommodate a large family, what's the trailer for you, Tom? It's the X1. It's, it's the original the X1. Room. The soft top X1 with the kid's room and the change room, the integration there. That is the family trailer. Yeah. Um, so, to answer the question, no. How tall is the inside camper um, from floor to top of roof? Oh, I did know this spec. I did, know, I did know this spec. I thought it was six foot. I think it was six foot three. Yeah. Six foot three, I think, can walk inside the camper trailer without touching the roof at the far edge. If you're standing towards the centre, towards the front of the chair where you see there, it must be. I don't, I don't yeah, know. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's tall. Very, very tall. Um, how does the door work? I uh, don't understand that question. Maybe they're talking about the rear door there. Yes, yeah, so um, if, if you are referring to how that all, that all zips up and that can be zipped up inside, and this is probably a feature we didn't talk about. No, we didn't talk about this. Actually, whoa, how did we miss that? <laughs> yes, go through it, Tommy. Okay, so yeah, that whole thing actually zips up uh, and you've got a fly, fly mesh there. Have we got, uh, control guys, have we got Jack still in the house? Is he, uh, house, is he in the booth? Is he there? Perfect. Uh, he's probably not uh, mic'd up, but let's let's have a quick demo. So as you can see, he's going to drop those down. There's two star styles of doors there. You've got the uh, fly, fly mesh um, to keep any of that out, and then you've got the full uh, sort of uh, door coverage uh, for privacy and things like that. But what I say is really good like that, if you're worried about the kids inside, about them getting out, is you can pull that door up and push that, uh, the main rear door, the steps, uh, and lock them inside like that, so they can't, you know, at night time, get out the camper uh, without you knowing. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. That was part of the design feature at the start. We weren't going to have the ability to have that rear door open and close if you had the canvas door closed. Um, but again, coming from the experience of everybody here, you know, somebody in the office is like, I've got young kids, I want to be able to lock them away. And that's how we came up with that. So you can see Jack there very clearly. You can have just the fly screen dropped or you can have the rear door dropped. Um, if you wanted added security uh, for the kids, here he goes. There you go. You can close that rear door. Thank you very much, Jack. Okay, uh, next one. What material are the seats made out of? Uh, they're a, a marine grade vinyl. Uh, very long wearing. Same as you'd find in like a wakeboarding boat, for example, or not even specifically a wakeboarding, any sort of boat. Any boat. And, but and, they're and, removable and, as well, so you can wash them. Exactly. And, and you can clean wipe the them, you can clean them. Really easy, really durable. Um, who. Can you hose out the wet boxes? Yes, that is exactly what the wet boxes are designed for. Um, so if you see the honeycomb there in the wet boxes, that is 100% that is what they are designed for. Packing wet gear, muddy gear, all the rest of it, lets all the, everything kind of seep out, and then when you want to clean them out, you just wash them out. Um, does it hold nine kilo um, LPG tanks? LPG, yeah, so you need to, it's four and a half kilo each. Mm -hmm. Gas bottle holder. Nine kilo total. Yep. Uh, Justin, would you go to truck and trailer to suit most condition? What Justin, would what would you go... Your go. Oh, what, what would be my go-to truck and trailer to suit most conditions? Um, go-to truck for me <laughs> now, without a doubt, not even anything else on the market that compares, is the 2500 brand. Oh. That's it, that, that's, that's the go-to truck. If I had to own one truck and one truck only, it would be a 2500 Ram. Second to that, I would still be a 200 series Land Cruiser. Again, if I was saying I could only own one, yeah? I'm not saying that's my favorite, yeah? Um, it would be the most practical, yeah. um, would be the 2500 for me and my lifestyle. 
Um, second in line to that would be a 200 series uh, Land Cruiser. You can do everything with them. As far as camper trailer for me right now, no brainer. It's the X3. X3. Yep. Um, how easy is it to close the rear steps from the inside? We just saw Jack do it from the outside, so um, it's it's pretty much the same from the inside. You just got to bend over and, and pull them up. Uh, size of the bed mattress? Do you know this one? I don't. I do. Okay, good. One point three eight meters wide. It's actually written here on my question sheet. <laughs> <laughs> two point two point oh four oh long and a hundred millimeters uh, thick. Uh, again, like an X1, very well in between a queen and a king size mattress. Same length as a king, a little bit narrower than a king, wider than a queen, yeah? When did Patriot start engineering the X-ray? Um, if you go back after this, uh, it must be someone who's just come on. Uh, look at the start of the video. We started the engineering in July 2013 was when we started engineering the X-ray. Do you still have a bottle opener in the frame? 100% where the gas bottle holder is. Sorry, Tom, to cut you. I'm just trying to mate, get, just get through this, yeah, mate. That's fine. If you had to use a spare tyre, will the main tyre fit back under the trailer? Yes, 100% it will, but it's just going to hang a little bit lower and give you a little bit less uh, clearance. Uh, is there skirting available to close off under the trailer so you've got another room made up once the sides are on? No, there isn't. What size porta potty would you recommend for the slide out? Okay, on the X3 it's a 365 porta potty, uh, and on the X1 I think 345. Copy that. Uh, how much weight can be put on the roof rack and still be able to flip it over? We would strong. It's a 100 kilo dynamic loaded uh, uh, load rate. We would strongly recommend removing everything off the roof rack before you flip it over, uh, and not for the reason that the roof rack couldn't handle it. I would be more inclined to be worried about damaging something. So if you were to wedge something in between it or something was to fall off yeah. and you know kids and safety yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Um, can you open the back door when the lid is closed? 100%. Uh, what is the weight rating on the bed? Um, good question. I actually don't know the answer to that. I uh, know we do have a load rating, but off the top of my head, I cannot remember. Do you offer a discount if the buyer has a beard 100%? Yeah? <laughs> the conditions that. around that is the beard has to be better than mine. And I don't mean better as in, I mean longer. If you've got a beard longer than mine, call Tommy and he will definitely give you a discount on your x-ray. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't say how much. Okay, okay. I didn't say how call, much. Call me. Okay, call Tommy. <laughs> All right, that's gonna wrap up the Q and A section. So guys, um, that's about it for tonight. That was a big one. Whoa, that was yeah, a, I mean, that, that was decent. That was, that was a doozy. But we covered. I think I feel like we covered everything. But guys, if I didn't, co if we didn't cover it, um, everything, and you do have questions, please uh, phone your nearest dealer, phone Patriot headquarters, uh, email us. Uh, we're happy to assist and, and help you with your um, search for the camper trailer. One hundred percent. There's a, look. There's a little bit. Um, there's a little bit of information available online now. Head to the website. Um, customers in the United States, the X3 is now stateside. It has arrived, it is there. It's in Oklahoma um, at Exploration Outfitters, our United States uh, dealer. Uh, we've got one heading over to, we've got a couple actually heading over to Mongolia uh, next month. Mm. Uh, so they're due to arrive, I think, in about July ish. Yeah. Um, Ryan from Off Grid now has an X3. Graham um, from Camping Adventures, his X3 just came off the line. So that's going to be shipped in the next very couple of days. Very exciting, very exciting. Very, very exciting stuff. Um, so you can get into all those dealers, you can see one, touch one, feel one, and we definitely recommend get in there, go and have a chat to these guys. The dealers are part of the extended Patriot family. They are an extension of us. They think like us, they camp like us. Um, they're, they're a good, good bunch of guys, yeah, and girls. Um, let's, let's recap on the pricing. 69990 here in Australia. And 51990 in the United States. Pretty much as you saw it tonight. Fridge is not included. Yep. Barbecue swing away is an option. Yep. And the utility slide out is an option. Yep. That's it. That's it. Everything else that you saw, oh, the walls kit is an option as well. Kit. Everything else that you've seen there tonight uh, is, is, standard. is standard in the X3. They come fully loaded. Um, again, watch the product videos. Um, make sure you like and subscribe uh, to this channel if you're enjoying the virtual tours. And again, we're looking for that feedback on the virtual tours. Uh, put it in the comments, put it in the body of YouTube. Let us know the things that you want to see. Next week we're doing the big boy. Oh yeah. The toy hauler. The big TH610. The big TH610 is next Wednesday. So guys, 
That's a good walk around virtual show with Tommy and myself at the 2020 winner of Camper Trailer of the Year, the brand new Patriot Campers X3, our new flagship model, the top of the range of the X series of camper trailers here at Patriot Campers. Ensure to check them out and tune in for the next virtual show uh, at Patriot Campers HQ. See you next week. Thank you.